should be careful. Do not kill anyone unless you have to. What's that? Kill as many Nazis as I can? No, I said... Can't hear you, Kessler. Lots of static. Wolfenstein, the old blood. I wanted to play this game for Halloween because it was spooky and zombies, even though I think they're really boring to fight. But then I realized, oh crap, I'm going to play through this entire game. I might as well record it. So, um, yeah, bonus review out of it, I guess. But uh, everything's set to easy mode, so just bear that in mind. I have a little bit of history with the Wolfenstein series. I played the first, I think, one or two. They were like top-down stealth games, and I thought those were really fun. I ended up trying to play Wolfenstein 3, and couldn't play that to save my life because that game gave me tremendous headaches. And I haven't touched the series until Wolfenstein The New Order, the game that this is sort of a prequel for? This game is weird, okay? It acts as a prequel to the main game, Wolfenstein The New Order. Except, that's not really what it existed to be in development. Originally, this game was actually two separate DLCs that they kind of just crammed together and then said prequel. And while I found this game to be kind of fun, I don't think it really worked all that well. The story follows our hero, William Joseph Blaskowicz, trying to return to Castle Wolfenstein. Because this originally existed as a remake of that. Fun fact. He needs to track down plans in order to find the secret base of an important Nazi commander who's working on dangerous experiments. Spoilers. That's literally what you do in the main game. This is a prequel to, so I'm betting he succeeds. Spoilers. However, not everything goes quite as planned. And now he must escape from Castle Wolfenstein. Oh yeah, and then suddenly they're zombies. Yeah, this gets weird. Originally, this was going to be a kind of a remake to Return to Castle Wolfenstein and then like a funny B-grade zombie shooter type thing. And again, they tried to mash them together and it doesn't really necessarily work. For one thing, only like the last two chapters involve zombies at all. And second of all, they just come out of nowhere. Like literally, there's an earthquake and then boom, everyone's a zombie for unexplained reasons. In fact, with the exception of the title kind of hinting at there being zombies, as well as one sort of semi-hidden tape thing, there's no illusion that there's any sort of like paranormal Nazi nonsense going on with zombies. Like, it, it just comes out of nowhere. And I don't necessarily like that. I, I don't think that's terribly well written, and it comes across as a massive tonal shift to the somewhat serious-ish Nazi shooting that this game was trying to portray beforehand. I mean, this game is trying to be like a goofy B-movie horror type of thing, right? Where, where's the B-movie-ness? There, there's no goofiness to this, it's weird. And despite the almost atonal nature of the story itself, there's actually some decent writing here. Sure, our boy BJ has plenty of necessary, dark, brooding, how long is this war going to end, I just have to keep going and hope for the best sort of internal monologue going on, which... I guess is sort of inherent to the nature of this sort of game. But then you see like really creeping bright lights of brilliance that shine through. I remember early on you get captured, spoilers, and your English buddy who also gets captured starts talking about sort of his favorite memories and how he wished he could go back to those places and just bits of that dialogue, something about that really shows that the writers really can write well. It's just, it, it feels like the structure of what this game is trying to be kind of inhibits that a whole lot. Like, okay, no, no, we have to go back to shooting Nazis who are, like, the most completely unambiguously evil characters we could think of, but also zombies. And th and then we have to write in zombies. Th this is gonna work, guys, for sure, for sure. It's sad because you can absolutely see really well-acted bits and really well-written moments, but it feels like the game doesn't necessarily allow for as much brilliant writing as the writers were capable of. And again, there's that weird tonal shift during the last two chapters where suddenly it's zombies and we can't really build up any narrative whatsoever because they're they're just there now because reasons. It, it feels like it's lacking narrative where it absolutely needed it most, or at least it needed B-movie camp or something, but it's lacking. Now the gameplay to Wolfenstein The Old Blood is actually pretty interesting because it has some interesting pacing. Very early on, 
during these sort of escape Castle Wolfenstein bits. For the most part, this game actually focuses entirely on stealth. You have to avoid big enemies that will basically kill you instantly, and you could try to like instant kill them by getting them into certain situations, but for the most part you have to avoid them. Once you start getting weapons, it sort of becomes a standard hide behind cover shooter, which is definitely a tonal shift from the earlier Wolfenstein shooters, which were run around as fast as possible, arcadey shooting things, which I still find to be far more enjoyable, but either way, it's, it's done well enough. And I do enjoy the fact that the level designs are usually very, very open and allow for multiple different ways to tackle problems. For example, you could try and avoid shooting anyone and stealth past a lot of situations. However, the way they've designed the levels to be sort of stealth past also mean that as soon as enemies detect you, you can just as easily run past everything and provided you don't get killed, you know, there's there's no real consequence to not just running past everything. And I'm not sure that's necessarily good. Another thing I have to complain about when it comes to sort of the way this game was designed for stealth is that it really wasn't. The closest thing to stealth this game really has is crouching and hoping the enemy doesn't stare directly at you. You can sit there and you can snipe an enemy with a silenced pistol from across the room. He'll fall dead in front of his ally and he won't even bat an eyelash. Like, like for whatever reason, you can just kill anyone in front of anyone else and that's not going to raise any alarms. Which is weird because they do have an alarm system, like they have commander characters that you're supposed to take out and if you don't take them out, they'll keep spawning more and more guys. And yet a pile of dead bodies in front of anyone else doesn't raise any sort of questions or alarms or anything. I would think that would up security a little bit or at least put people on edge. But really, stealth is just a matter of don't stand directly in front of the opponent's view and you are golden. And even then, as long as you're like 10 feet away, they still don't notice you. It's really weird their detection rate in this game. But of course, it wouldn't be a shooter without some shooting. And you can't shoot without guns. Well, this game's got a decent number of them, and it has some interesting options. You can usually dual wield pretty much any weapon in the game, which I do appreciate, but I will say the game this is a prequel of, The New Order, did it a lot better. There's a lot more different weapons in that game, a lot more different enemies to shoot at. This game, there's really not that many. You've got pistols, you've got assault rifles, you've got shotguns, you've got a flare gun, which I thought was a really fun addition. However, once again, that whole zombie segment comes up as sort of a weird thing that doesn't quite mesh with the rest of the game, because once that starts, you acquire your final weapon, which is just another shotgun. I mean, you already had them. All this one does is burn through ammo twice as quick. This was totally a missed opportunity for some sort of like weird occult nonsense gun that would have been ripped straight out of painkiller or something. You know, it feels like if they really wanted to add another weapon for this zombie apocalypse nonsense, they could have come up with something unique or at least something more fitting than just another weapon you already have one of. Especially considering they dedicate an entire cutscene to retrieving it. One thing I do quite like though is that the enemies do feel fundamentally different. Sure, there's only two or three different soldiers and then one or two like really big heavy guys plus dogs, which seriously, there was a big robot dog, they needed to use more of him. Like seriously, he shows up twice in the entire game. That's, that's definitely unfortunate. But what I found interesting was the fact that while there aren't a lot of different enemies, they do behave fairly differently. For example, your standard Nazi soldiers, they hide behind cover, they use tactics, they try and find a way to encroach on you from all directions, sort of like using a actual practical, tactical, swarming sort of plan. Like, they come from all directions, hide behind cover when you're aiming at them, they act like they have a brain in their head. Whereas the zombies don't, they just straight up rush you. But the thing about zombies is they're a lot easier to take out, they feel like they take less bullets to kill, so they have to make up for it in numbers. It feels like you're actually fighting basically shambling piles of meat with no sense of self-preservation versus actual rational human beings. Not to mention the actual Nazi soldiers all having sort of different styles. You've got the guys who come in like the big armored hazmat suits with like the big explosive canisters on their back, which you can tactically target to take them out. Seriously, there are pinpoint areas you can target on your opponents to get like advantages. Even the standard Nazi soldiers, if you shoot them in their heads, you can sometimes take their helmets off and equip that as armor for yourself. That was such a cool concept. There is a lot of really fun ideas with this game that I think work really, really well. But again, it feels like two different games kind of opposing each other, all well not really dedicating enough time to either. This is a very short game, and it could have spent more time adding more concepts, more characters, more enemies, and just developing what they had a lot better. One thing I did quite like, though, was once the Nazis and zombies are kind of introduced together, 
There's not really a lot of conflict between the two. Basically, everyone just turns into zombies. But once or twice, you do run into situations where there are Nazis and zombies. And if you happen to shoot some Nazis, they'll turn into zombies. Although it's sort of a 50-50 thing. Sort of like that one guy from Resident Evil 4 who turns into like this giant scythe-headed thing. Still have nightmares about that guy. But once you turn those Nazis into zombies, well, suddenly all the other Nazis start attacking it. And you can just use that as a distraction to sneak by. It's a neat tactical choice they programmed into the game that I gotta admit, I really appreciate it. Because it does feel like, again, people were passionate about what they were doing. And they were thinking about all the different cool ideas they could fit into this. Except that they didn't have enough time or resources or something because again it all just feels half-baked and that's a shame because I really did enjoy the overall gameplay experience to Wolfenstein the Old Blood. It just needed to spend more time developing what it had and maybe adding a little bit more. Now the overall presentation to Wolfenstein the Old Blood is it's okay. There's not really a lot to this that I think is particularly interesting to look at. It doesn't have a lot of the sci-fi-ness that the New Order happened to have, and it doesn't really feel like it's trying to fit into that mold of trying to be a goofy B-movie horror thing. It really does just feel like, well, we gotta make a game, let's just crank it out with the assets we have and maybe add one or two new things. But it doesn't really feel like it visually has much of its own personality or anything that would make me point it out in a line with a million other shooters and say, okay, that one, that one's Wolfenstein the Old Blood, because I can just tell it has this unique visual thing. It doesn't have that. It works for what it needs to do, and that's great. And some of the enemy designs, like I've talked about, are pretty great. The big hulking guys and their power armor, the giant robot dogs, those are fun. And then all the zombies basically look the same and act the same and are not terribly interesting. But still, there are some visual things that are great about it, but it doesn't really exceed expectations. It does what it needs to do, but that's about it. And audio-wise, it's much the same. The actual voice acting and the acting behind the characters is great, but it doesn't feel like there's really anything particularly stand out about any of it. Overall, the presentation is certainly serviceable, but nothing really to write home about. It looks good, but there's not really a ton special about it. Now, if you want a copy of Wolfenstein, The Old Blood, cheapest one I'm seeing right now is $15, and that's okay. I've seen it in a bundle with Wolfenstein The New Order, the game it's a prequel of, or I guess also possibly DLC expansion for but then not. And I'm not sure I necessarily could recommend it as a bundle. First of all, Wolfenstein The New Order, I've not talked about it, I've not reviewed it, but I thought it was a significantly better game. It was longer, it had a lot more interesting concepts, it was a lot more better developed, it had a lot more just of content in general, and it was just better done. And if you take this as simply an expansion of that, well then it's serviceable, but I still think the main game was better. Another reason why I wouldn't necessarily recommend a bundle pack is simply because playing them back to back will wear you down, I think. I played a couple of these Bethesda id shooters, and out of the three I've played, I, I honestly think they really do start wearing down after a while. Like, Wolfenstein The New Order, the one I played first, I really, really enjoyed. I thought it got a little stale near the end, but I ended up enjoying it quite a lot. Wolfenstein The Old Blood was fun to go back to, but I think it needed a lot more to keep it entertaining. It felt like it was just going Going through the motions a little bit and the last one that i've played which was their new doom game honestly i couldn't even finish it I, I felt really really bored playing it and that's bizarre because out of all of them that would be the one that interests me the most i'm, I'm gonna have to go back to play that one honestly these id bethesda shooters they are fun for what they are they do end up bleeding a bit together and if you play them back to back to back they're going to wear you down a lot. If you're going to get one new Wolfenstein game, I would recommend the main game, Wolfenstein The New Order, as opposed to Wolfenstein The Old Blood, because it just did everything this game did, but more and better. This game is fun, and it's a neat little entry point if you want to just test the water, because from what I can tell digitally, it is typically a little bit cheaper. But if you're only going to get one, just get The New Order, because... It's just this, but better in every way, and a lot less atonal. 